And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Max Lincoln, who writes, Greetings from Chile, John and crew. Thanks for all your work. Two days ago, uh, Warner Brothers re-released a Man of Steel, or tra- a Man of Steel trailer, uh, but but now in 4K, and it was as beautiful as back in 2013. But it reminded me probably of the most wrong of their decisions, not making a proper, true Man of Steel sequel. It's been eight years, and we all have heard, uh, and we and we all have heard any kind of gossip about it. But what's the truth here? What does it really take for them to make a Man of Steel 2? Thanks, and bring on the filthy. All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, man. And yeah, listen, the discussions and talk and speculation and rumors about a Man of Steel 2 have been going around ever since the first Man of Steel. They have intensified a little bit recently with the news that Warner Brothers is making a new Superman. It's obviously going to be in a separate universe, much like Robert Pattinson's Batman that is being produced by by J.J. Abrams, which has only intensified the discussions about, you know, whatever happened with Man of Steel 2. Now, look, everybody knows how I feel about Man of Steel. To me, I think it's one of the greatest comic book movies ever made. I think it is absolutely the most underrated comic book movie ever made, easily. It's one of these films that, to me, gets better and better with every viewing. I love this film. And Henry Cavill is my all-time favorite Superman. Of course, there's Henry right there. Wait, where is he? There he is, right there, standing right there, overseeing the the studio and the office, protecting everything. He's my all-time favorite. So, obviously, I have a certain take on the idea of a Man of Steel, too. I would kill... To have a Man of Steel 2. I would love a Man of Steel 2. But in asking the question, is this the dumbest decision that Warner Brothers ever made, not making a Man of Steel 2? As a massive fan of the movie, no, it wasn't a dumb decision not to make a Man of Steel (laughs) 2. Look, the reality is this. We as fans sometimes need to step out of our shoes as fans and try to put ourselves in the shoes of the people who actually have the responsibility to make these massive hundreds of millions, if not billion dollar decisions and what works and doesn't work. The fact of the matter is half the critics hated Man of Steel and half the audience hated it. Rob, I can't to this day, I can't put out like I put out a tweet the other day That was like, it it marked the uh, eighth, I think it was the eighth anniversary of Man of Steel coming out. I said, I took this picture eight years ago today when I was walking into the theater to watch Man of Steel, right? I can't mention Man of Steel without getting flooded with, Man of Steel sucks! Man of Steel sucks! And that's cool. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Nothing wrong with that. It's totally good. But the reality is, it, number one, underperformed financially. It did pretty well. Like, it made north of $600 million. But in in an environment, Rob, where comic book movies had started to crank in a billion dollars and you are the granddaddy of all superheroes and you get totally mixed reactions from the audience in the studio and you only make about 600 million, that was seen as a big disappointment. The reality is, Rob, forget that it was a Superman movie. A movie that you put out that you believe had billion dollar potential, forget that it was Superman, just a movie, movie X, that your studio believe had billion dollar potential, you put it out, it was hated by half the audience and half the critics and made almost just half of what you thought the potential was. Do you rush ahead then and make a sequel to that movie? The answer is probably not. And then they put out Batman versus Superman, which was a movie that I like quite a bit, But let's face it, a movie called Batman versus Superman had the potential to not be a billion dollar film. That was a movie that should have had the potential to be a two billion dollar film. It was absolutely a movie that should have made a billion dollars in its sleep. In its absolute sleep, that movie should have made a billion dollars. Easy, without doing anything, without without a trailer. Any movie called Batman vs. Superman should have made a billion dollars. It should have had the potential of being a $2 billion movie. And it made, well, in the neighborhood of what, $800 million? Something around that? Yeah. And again, very mixed reception from audiences, very mixed reception from fans. And and at the centerpiece of that was, again, Henry Cavill, who I loved in it, but a lot of people didn't. 
So Rob, it comes back to that, that same struggle that sometimes we as fans, because I obviously, I would give a pinky finger to see man of steel too with Henry Cavill, obviously. But when I put myself as a fan in the shoes of one of those executives, is it really something that they should? Now, I would have understood if they did. It would have been cool if they did. And I think there's an argument to be made about why maybe you could risk it. But honestly, I don't blame them for not doing it because look at the results they've had already. So I don't know, Rob. Two ways I want you to address this. One as a fan, oh. one as a studio executive. As a fan and as a studio executive is not doing Man of Steel to one of the dumbest decisions Warner Brothers ever made? Uh, I think it is. And, and look, I've always looked at uh, Man of Steel as a science fiction first contact story within the context of Superman. And I liked it for that reason. I, I thought, look, it, it, you know, everybody wants Superman to be a certain way. Everybody has their own vision of Superman, whether it's the Superman, Christopher Reeve Superman or Superman, the animated series or, you know, Justice League International or whatever comic iteration of Superman that you like. But for me, what I really liked about Man of Steel was it, it was an attempt to say, OK, if Superman came to our planet right now, well, what would that be like? Or, 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 or Kal-El Clark can't realize he was Superman today. And then, of course, an alien force arrives on Earth to, to deal with him. And I, I liked it from that perspective. Like, I didn't watch Man of Steel and think, well, I want my Superman to be this way. I was watching it for what it was presenting to me, and I really enjoyed it. And I think that it's also the story of Superman himself being forged. That's why the movie's not called Superman. It was called Man of Steel. Now, once the Man of Steel realizes he's the Man of Steel, then he can become Superman. And I, I thought the second movie... Because Warner Brothers has never made a movie just Superman. There was Superman the movie, but nobody ever made a movie just called Superman or the Man of Tomorrow or maybe the Man of Man of Steel and Man of Tomorrow. Maybe the third film should have been Superman. But I think Henry Cavill was great in the role. And by the end of 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 Man of Steel, he's in a different place. He saved the Earth. And it I was like, well, of course, the next movie will make a billion dollars, just like the trajectory of any other uh, superhero franchise over across the street at the MCU. It's like, if you look at the grosses, uh, aside from Iron Man, if you look at the grosses of Thor and Captain America, they weren't billion of the first movies, Captain America, the first Avenger and the first Thor, they weren't billion dollar grossing films. They have to build on what they've done. And I think if you made a Superman movie that was more along the lines of what a traditional Superman story is thought of they would have made a billion dollars but they didn't give him that chance i disagree with that i because well, because i because I, i've heard a lot of people make that argument before that well the first thor didn't make a billion yeah that's because when those movies came out comic book movies weren't making billions of dollars yet they were literally developing the genre by the time man of steel came around the MCU had done all the work. They had laid all the groundwork and they had elevated the comic book genre to the place that comic book movies can make a billion dollars. Whereas when Thor, the first Captain America or the first Iron Man movie came out, that wasn't the environment. When Man of Steel came out, it was the environment that they were making that. And here's the other problem, Rob. Like the idea that a Man of Steel 2 would have made a billion dollars, according to what? Half the critics hated it. Half the audience hated it. I don't think there's any tangible uh, uh, circumstance that we can point to to say that we can confidently believe that the next Man of Steel would have made a billion dollars because they put the same Superman in Batman versus Superman and it still failed to make a billion dollars. So I don't know that I see that equivalency yet. Well, I mean, look, the Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3, Raimi's Spider-Man movies, made almost $800 million, And then Spider-Man 2, uh, Spider-Man 3 made over $800 million. And And I think that it, 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 it even with half the audience... But they were beloved. It, hating, I mean, those first but, two yeah, Spider-Man movies were beloved. Audience, People loved Man them. Of Steel and, but critics, and they, it still made over $650 million. And that's, I mean, for half the audience hating it, if they could have made a course correction and give people more of a traditional Superman story, I think it might have. You know, it could have, it, 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 it and it, by the way, the first one should have as well. It's just that I think that as much as I enjoyed it, obviously people expected something else 
from a Superman movie. Yeah, that's true. And it was, you know, look, Superman has traditionally been a four quadrant character. Uh, all, all people of all ages love Superman. Super, Man of Steel was very much directed at a certain kind of crowd. And it was, I mean, look at the end of that movie. It's very apocalyptic. It's very brutal. It ends with Superman, well, committing a needed murder uh, in order to save the world. And it wasn't, it wasn't the traditional Superman story that everybody has known. But if they had course corrected a little bit and gave people more, I mean, I, you know, Batman v Superman also is is about the as just about as opposite from a Superman feeling movie as you can possibly get, and and I think that the vision that Zack Snyder brought is a particular vision that is not a four quadrant vision, and I think that that might have had something to do with it. But if they had changed it up a little bit and made the film you know, end on a grace note with the sun shining or something. And, you know, Superman and Lois sitting in a field somewhere looking at butterflies and arm in arm having a picnic lunch. Maybe it would have done more, more, but you know, who knows? I mean, look, there's nothing more I would want. You, you, you know how much of a huge freak I am for man of steel and Henry Cavill as it. And I want them to do another yeah. one badly. And, and I, and if I was, I, I, Again, I don't, I don't know. I just, it's always, I always lament the fact that my God, they gave us such a great movie with a great Superman with a great story in these modern times. I know you were right when you pointed that out. There there was a lot of people who went in, I think to man of steel with a predetermined idea about what they wanted that Superman to be. They wanted him to be the 1970s Superman. They wanted him to be Christopher Reeve with the, and I all do I love Christopher Reeve, but with the little curl and gosh golly ma'am, I'll get that kitten from the tree for you and oh boy, this apple pie is swell. I mean, there was a lot of people who went into that Superman movie and we know this because they said it. They said, "We I, that's not my Superman. I want a Superman that does this." And I've always lamented that people never gave it uh, the chance just to be what it was because what it was I thought was brilliant I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant what they did with that film and I wish it had more success anyway the question is for you guys what do you think about that topic they brought up do you think it was a really bad move to not do a Man of Steel 2 not as a fan but put yourselves in the mm. shoes of a studio executive was it really that clear that you should just go ahead and do it i wish they would but i kind of get why they didn't others may think differently how do you guys think about that jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts okay guys <laughs> 